Right, welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about smart search and possibly what goes beyond smart search. Um, get the right key. Ah, there we go, right. Um, so uh, I'm Chris Davenport and I'm on the production leadership team. Most of my responsibility on that team is actually for documentation, but I do dabble in one or two other things as well, and uh, just in recent uh, months, uh, I've been particularly interested in search. Um, so, the search problem. Uh, Joomla search sucks. Um, the old search sucks. I'm not going to talk about the old Joomla search, though, because, uh, well, I don't want to talk about it, really. Those are some of the reasons I don't like it. Um, you can probably add to that list if you want to. Um, so this talk, uh, I'm going to divide it up into these sections, and I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are with Smart Search at the moment. Um, a look at Smart Search actually in use, and uh, then I'm going to spend a bit of time looking at actually how Smart Search works, and then we'll go on to other things after that. Um, so a little bit of history uh, as to where we are with Smart Search and where it came from. The old Joomla search actually is, was in Mambo originally, and it really hasn't changed very much in, in the years since then. What we have in 1.5 uh, as an old search, or even 2.5 as, as the old search, is, would be not unrecognizable from Mambo days. Um, the next big ste step occurred really when the J-Extended people uh, produced their Finder uh, component, um, which was written for 1.5 specifically. Um, and a lot of people liked that. I liked it particularly. I didn't actually start using it until it, it reached version 2, but uh, when I started using it, I thought, yeah, we, we really need to have this sort of technology in, in Joomla. And uh, the J-Extended team uh, very graciously allowed us to actually take that component when they moved to eBay uh, and, and incorporate it into the, uh, into the core. And uh, starting from the last PLT summit um, back in... October, I think it was last year, we decided to set up a, the Finder Integration Working Group uh, to actually make that happen, to actually bring that code into, into the Joomla core. Uh, and uh, we're very lucky to get uh, Michael Babker in particular did a tremendous amount of work in actually making that happen. So uh, Smart Search, that resulted in Smart Search actually being introduced into, into 2.5. Smart Search as it stands right now is pretty much Finder, the original Finder. Uh, with some code changes, uh, but it's pretty much the same. And now, of course, as, as you perhaps know, we're setting up a new search working group uh, to look at what goes beyond that, uh, to, to see where we can take smart search for in future releases, but also maybe what goes beyond smart search completely as well. Um, <clears throat> so those are some of the major features in, in smart search in, in Joomla 2.5. Uh, I'm not going to go through the detailed list. If, uh, has, has everybody played with Smart Search at least? Uh, not everybody, but maybe 40%, maybe something like that. Um, it, does, it has a lot of features. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all. I, I encourage you to, to just activate it uh, on a, on a 2.5 site and just play with it and see how you get on with it. Um, let's have a look at one or two sites that actually are using Smart Search. Um, uh, this is uh, a li just a little site, and this is pretty much the first sort of thing that you'll notice, uh, it, and that is your, that you get auto-suggestion on the, on the search queries. Um, I have a small confession to make. Actually, this isn't a, two, uh, a smart search on 2.5 site. This is actually a finder on 1.5. Uh, I've only just started, in fact, deploying 2.5 sites, so uh, I don't have too many examples of, uh, of smart search actually running. But if, I, if this were a 2.5 site, it would look exactly the same. The, the, the functionality is exactly the same. Uh, this is another one. This is actually an estate agent um, with sales properties. Uh, and this is the search results page. And you can see, I think, from this that it's completely customizable 
uh, use layout overrides to customize it, and I'll say more about that uh, shortly. On the left-hand side, we've got a, um, uh, the mod finder module, uh, which controls the, uh, the, the form where you enter the search queries. On the right-hand side of the central part of the screen is, is the component output. Uh, and in fact, most of the menu items along the top there where it says uh, sales and uh, lettings are actually uh, links to smart search filters. Uh, and actually, this one is really a genuine uh, 2.5 site running smart search. Same sort of thing. There's a, there's a strip across the top with, uh, uh, where you have a search, like a search bar, and there's some drop downs there uh, where you can actually filter the search queries. So let's now uh, have a look uh, actually under the hood of smart search and see, see what it actually, how it actually works. I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm going to go this, through this really quite quickly because uh, it's actually a very, very complex component. Uh, but I just want to give you a flavor of how uh, the thing works. A search is actually uh, a game of two halves. And uh, the first half is um, uh, taking, uh, analyzing the raw data that you've got. Uh, and building an index. And this is the major difference between new search, the, the smart search, and old search, is that we are actually building a separate index. And then the second half is where we, f we fire search queries at that index, and we get search results back out of it. Uh, and the important point to note here is that in this second phase, when you're actually querying that index, you don't ac actually access the raw data anymore. You're only actually pulling data out of the index. Uh, so this, again, is another example of uh, a finder, again, as, as it happens. Uh, another estate agency site. The thing to note is that the, uh, all the data that you can see there, uh, like the, the image, the, uh, the, addre the address of the property, the property details, and so forth, that information is actually stored in the index. It's coming from the index. It's not coming from the property database itself. You only get to the property database when you click on a link there. Uh, so let's have a look at the process of actually indexing. And broadly speaking, it's divided into eight parts, and I'll run through them fairly quickly. Um, but to look at the database, that this is what you're trying to build, really, is this database. When I talk about an index, it's not just one table here. We're actually talking about lots of different tables. Uh, and if you ever actually had a look at the the database within, uh, within 2.5, you'll see that there's a lot of JOS underscore finder tables there. There's a, just, I don't know how many there are, about 20 of them, I think, something like that. Um, the main one to look at is this JOS finder links, uh, which is there's one row in that table which points to each content item. So one content item has one row in that table. And the things that we're indexing, the, the, the terms, like the words or the phrases that we're indexing, are stored in the JOS finder terms table. Now, there's a many-to-many -many relationship between those two uh, tables. So, you know, one term can be in many content items. A content item has, can have many terms that you want to index. So, at the bottom, we have there uh, a resolving entity, uh, uh, a resolving map, really, which, uh, which resolves that many-to-many uh, -many relationship. Uh, and the X on the end there indicates that, in actual fact, it's broken up into 16 separate tables, and that's for a performance reason. Uh, there are, actually, you end up with a lot of entries in the, in the mapping table. Um, on large, site, large sites, it can run to millions of entries. Uh, and once you get that many entries, then inserting and deleting into it is quite slow. So we separate it out into 16 tables just to improve the performance on that. Uh, and at the top there, we've got a, a common terms table. This is really for <laughs> words that uh, we want to put in the index, which are, which are, which are common words like, um, apologies, um, like if, uh, but, uh, things like that in English, which uh, are not very useful as search terms. Uh, so we, we actually keep a, a small table of these common words that we don't really want to use, particularly as search terms. So the first part of actually building this uh, index is, uh, we call it parsing, uh, and it's, it's really throwing out markup and stuff that we actually don't want, we're not interested in actually indexing. So typically in uh, a Joomla article, for example, you're actually looking at HTML. So you want to strip out all the HTML tags that you're not interested in, because ultimately you just want plain text that's coming out of this thing. Um, if you've got other formats uh, there, you need to do equivalent sort of things. So if you've got PDF, for example, you would have to strip out all the PDF information to get down to the actual text that you want. So the output of the parser is just plain text, just like one long string of plain text. 
Next, you have to tokenize that text, so you have to split it up into individual words, which is not necessarily as easy as it looks, certainly in some languages. Uh, Chinese, for example, doesn't use a space character between words, or it doesn't even have a concept of a word necessarily. It, it has different ideas. So we have to try and cope with that, which we can actually do with Chinese, but Japanese we haven't quite cracked yet. Um, but we also have to deal with uh, other things like uh, apostrophes uh, and various other things like that, which, which uh, are language-specific even. Um, uh, we're doing it fairly well, I think, in English at the moment. We're not doing it terribly well in, in other languages, and we need to look at that. Um, we also have things like, uh, in German, uh, words tend to be uh, like composite words, so you get what, like one long word, which ideally we'd like to be able to split that up uh, to actually tokenize the individual words. Uh, we're not doing that at all at the moment. Um, but this is, this is for the future. At the moment, it tends to be a bit English-specific. It works for other languages fine, uh, but it, uh, it could work better in other languages. Uh, having broken up into individual tokens, we then actually kind of do the opposite and aggregate the tokens back together again. Uh, so this is a sort of a sentence that you might come across in an article on a clear disk you can seek forever, and those are, underneath is the, is the list of terms that we're actually going to put into that terms table. And you can see that not only do we put individual words into that terms table, but we also put every pair of words into that table and every triplet of words. So every one, two, and three character subsequence within that plain text that we got out of the parser is going to go into the terms table. And that's why this terms map table gets to be so big. It's because we're doing so much of this. But this is, is important because it actually improves the quality of the search. If you actually type a sentence into your search query, then you, you're going to get much better search results out because you, you can actually focus down on the things that are, that are really important. Um, order suggestion particularly works well with that. Uh, next step is, is basically, uh, well, in the textbooks call it filtration, and the, what they often do is, uh, is actually remove stop words, remove these common words which are actually not very useful in search queries. Uh, actually drop them entirely. Smart search doesn't drop them, it just gives them a lower weight in the, in the search. Uh, so again, we have to uh, ac account for that in the, in, in the indexing process. Um, at the moment, the, uh, if you actually install uh, Smart Search, in install Joomla 2.5, the common terms table only has English words in it. So if you've got other languages installed on your system and you want to use Smart, smart Search, then it's actually a good idea to try and load that table up with these additional common words in your particular language. We don't really have a mechanism for doing that at the moment. So you have to do it with uh, you know, an SQL statement or whatever. So again, that's something else we need to look at. Then comes the interesting process of, of stemming. Um, anyone know what stemming is? Have anyone heard that term before? Yeah, a few people, okay. Um, basically, it's uh, getting, uh, stripping down a word down to, its, uh, to, a, to a root word, um, and then actually putting that in, into the terms index as well. So, for example, somebody searching on the word fishing is also going to get search results which, contain, which don't contain the word fishing, but might contain the word fished, let's say. Uh, so again, it improves the quality of the search results. Google is very, very good at this. Google introduced stemming, I think, in 2003 onto their search uh, system. Smart Search does it as well, not as good as Google, perhaps, but uh, it does it. Um, we have a few issues, however, with, with stemming. Uh, by default, I think, it, I think this is right. I'm not sh absolutely certain whether it is the default at the moment, but I think it's right. By default, it, we, Smart Search uses the snowball stemmer. If you go into the, uh, into the back end and look at the options, it you, you've got a, a drop down which has, you, know, you can select which stemmer you want. There's only two on the list. And the default, I think, is, is Snowball, which looks pretty good because it supports 14 different languages. Unfortunately, as we discovered, it's not installed on the majority of PHP installations. So it's, it's an extension. You can get it from Peckle. Um, but for most sites, it's, it's just not available. So effectively, they don't get any stemming. So even though it's effectively supported, it doesn't actually work. Um, uh, now, it doesn't make the search crash or anything dramatic like that. It's just not using the stemming. Uh, if you are running an English language site, then I would strongly recommend switching to English only as the stemmer, uh, because that is always available. That, is, uh, that stemmer is written in PHP, so it will run on any system. It's always available. Um, and ideally, what we would like to see, of course, is stemmers being written for 
PHP stem is being written for our other, other languages as well. But there seems to be a, a great shortage of uh, PHP stemmers at the moment. Uh, then we get to a stage which uh, I've, I've called it here morphological analysis, which is, uh, I don't know, a horrible expression, but I can't think of a better one. Um, it's not actually part of search per se. Um, what it is, is it's used for, to, to, to allow you to perform this did you mean type function, where, where if you don't get a, any search results coming back, um, then smart search can suggest an alternative expression which is in the index, which, uh, which might, be, might be close to what you've asked for. Uh, and the way it works, it works is actually to use the soundx function. Now, the soundx function is a, um, uh, not available necessarily in other languages. It's primarily an English one. It works for most European languages, but it's not perfect in other languages, and certainly for things like Chinese and Japanese, no chance. It's just non-functional in those languages. So effectively, in those languages, you don't get that did you mean function. Um, so we need to, again, work on that. Are there ways in which we can develop algorithms that will work in these other languages to do the equivalent kind of thing? Google have obviously uh, uh, cracked this sort of problem, but uh, they're not telling us how it works. So. <laughs> uh, and then the, uh, the last stage is uh, term weighting. Um, <coughs> uh, really, each of the individual search terms that go into the index have to be assigned a particular weight, depending on the context in which they were found in the, in the raw data. Uh, so, uh, if, if the search term is, is part of a title, then it's given additional weight, than, uh, more weight than something that's included just in the body of the text. Uh, these weights are actually, uh, I mean, this, these multipliers here, I should say, are actually only part of the algorithm that is used by smart search to, to determine the weight when you actually enter a search query. Uh, but these are interesting because you can actually override these in the back end of smart search. You, there's a, as an option setting where you can actually define what those multipliers are yourself. So if you've got a particular, you can do it in the plugin as well. So you've got a particular content item where you want to assign different multipliers to it, different weights to these different contexts, then you can do that. So that's, that gets you basically the terms in the terms table. Uh, we've then got an additional step where, which I've called classification here, where we're building um, what in the back end of smart search they call content maps. Uh, in the code of Smart Search, you'll find they're referred to as taxonomies. But basically, if, if you recall these drop downs that you get in, um, uh, this is actually the extensions directory, Joomla extensions directory. In advanced search, you get these drop downs where you can select which category of uh, thing that you want. Uh, those are the taxonomies, those are the, the, the Smart Search taxonomies. Although, again, this one's actually fine, but never mind. So we have to build those. You don't have to render them as drop-downs. Um, using the override system, this is a, a, cert, this is a site that went live uh, just before Christmas, actually, um, where the uh, taxonomies are rendered as, as a bunch of checkboxes. So a user can go to that site there and just tick which, check bo tick, tick which categories they want to, to search in, uh, and that will go away and do that. So it's exactly the same mechanism as those drop-downs. It's just sort of rendering, it, rendering the form differently. Uh, or, into alternatively, you can render those taxonomies as, as links. So there we have things like consultancy and direct services on the, on the left there, which are links to search taxonomies. Uh, and similarly, on the right-hand side, that's actually a, a flash map. But again, they're just links to, uh, to ta search taxonomies. And to support those taxonomies, we have a couple of extra tables. Um, just find a taxonomy, just basically is a table of all the, uh, the names of those taxonomies. Uh, and then there's a resolving entity there between uh, the taxonomies and the, link, and the links table. Now, how do you actually, um, where do you actually put the code to build all this stuff? Um, well, the answer is it's in plugins. At least it is for the moment. We may actually move them out of plugins and have a, like a, a search API within the platform. But at the moment, it's all in plugins. Uh, and those are the plugins that are shipped by default with, with uh, Joomla 2.5 at the moment. Uh, in the content group, you'll find that there is a finder plugin, and that acts as a proxy to the um, plugins that are in the finder group. It also enables us to be able to, uh, with basically one click, we can uh, enable or disable smart search indexing as a whole. 
uh, by default you'll probably have noticed it's actually disabled uh, so your default search is actually still the old search um, but if you actually go into uh, components smart search in the admin the first thing you'll see on that screen is it will tell you that the uh, smart search component is not enabled uh, so in order to use the indexing on it you need to enable it and that would be the content finder uh, plugin that you need to enable there so you need one plugin for each content type that, uh, that you've got uh, so by default the, the content types that Joomla 2.5 has categories, content, contacts, news feeds, web links you can add your own um, custom content types in there if you've got your own particular database of, tab uh, of information that you want to, to index uh, and it doesn't need, even need to be in a database the plugin just needs to be able to pull out those uh, those search terms effectively pull out, the, pull out the, the, uh, the data that needs to be indexed and pass it across to smart searches indexer so the, the raw data could actually come from another, data, another database on another system or it could come from I don't know, a URL or it could come from an external file like a PDF for example you can actually index PDFs there isn't a plug in there for doing PDFs at the moment uh, but it is possible in fact there was actually a finder plug in that would index PDFs but we haven't ported it over um, so the way this proxy works basically is that uh, it, it looks for uh, events, uh, the usual standard content change events, so on content after save and, and things like that, uh, and it just fires off the equivalent finder event. So all the all the finder plugins will be written to fire on on finder after save, but they will actually be responding to on content after save. Uh, as I said before, search is a, is a game of two halves, and that was the process of indexing, um, which is, a, a, as you can see, a, quite a, an involved uh, process. There's a lot of steps in there, and there's a lot of code involved in actually doing it, and it's not even particularly fast. Uh, it can take anywhere between minutes to hours to index a site, depending on how much content you've got. On the other hand, the other half of that search problem, actually querying the search, um, uh, querying the search index is a lot simpler and a lot faster. Um, there's a lot of options available. I'm not going to go into the, all this, uh, the, the, the details of this stuff. Um, but you can actually assemble your search queries via, by just building up um, a URI. So you can use a GET request or you can su submit it in a POST request. Uh, and those are some of the fields in the middle there that you can actually uh, use to perform, to construct the search query. And the query, it's query string itself, uh, normally you would just enter text in there, but it's actually, there's actually a query language, effectively, that you, can, that you can use in there. So you can actually include taxonomies in there, taxonomy queries as part of that search query. Um, however, when I was putting these slides together, I actually tried to just test that. Uh, and I, I can see, actually, that some of the smart search things are, are not quite working quite right. They worked in Finder, but we seem to have broken them, and, and nobody's reported them as being broken. So. I shall, we shall have to sort those out. There is one at the bottom there, incidentally, which is interesting. There's the uh, QH equals text there, which actually uses the, the, um, the highlighter plugin. Um, and, and the highlighter plugin is actually a generic thing. So it was, although it was originally written for Finder, uh, you can actually use it in, in other components as well. If there's some piece of text on a screen that you want highlighted, then you just need to, uh, to interface with that. Uh, it's just a bit of JavaScript, basically. Uh, but it's, it's compatible then with, with Smart Search. Uh, then we get to the interesting part of, of actually rendering the search results. So having submitted your query, um, Smart Search will effectively give you back an object which, will, which contains all the search results. Um, and you need to render those search results. Now, Smart Search is a fully MVC compliant component. It uses all the current standards within the core. Uh, and you can override uh, pretty much anything that comes out of it. Um, the default is just a plain list of, uh, of, of items. Uh, it's pretty boring, and it looks very similar to the old search, in actual fact. But you have this flexibility to override all of that stuff. Um, so in ComFinder, the search view is the search results page. In fact, I think it's the only view in there. Um, and the default.php is obviously the, the entry point for uh, those search results. Form.php renders a form within the search results page. So if you want to uh, refine the search query that you've made, 
then you would, you would enter into uh, uh, information into that form. Default underscore results is uh, basically where the, uh, the entire page of results is, is rendered, in, which includes the pagination um, elements at the top and or bottom, wherever you want them. Uh, and default underscore result is the default template for an individual search result. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is that you can actually add your own uh, layouts for individual content types. So if you put default underscore categories.php, for example, then you can render just the category search results differently from, uh, say, article search results. So each individual content type can be rendered differently within the search results. Um, and then ModFinder is the, is the module that uh, we use to render uh, basically a just a search form. And that can be put anywhere on the, on the site, obviously, to, uh, to render that form. So a, again, this is revisiting this one. It's a typical sort of uh, search results page where we've used overrides. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got an override for ModFinder. And then the main part of the page, the component area, is the override for uh, ComFinder. Uh, and this is actually a custom content type that's being used here. Now, the interesting thing here is that if you look on the uh, left-hand side there, there's a little button called Map Search there. And if you were to click that on the site, what you would see is that. Uh, now, these two are actually just different layouts for the same data. So it's the same model, same view, same controller. All you're doing is substituting a different layout. So that's the kind of flexibility that you've got in rendering search results with Finder. So that's uh, a very speedy, I think, look at uh, what goes on underneath the, underneath the hood of, of Smart Search. Let's have a look at a couple of um, tips and tricks or things to watch out for. Um, there are occasions when uh, you, you know that you, the, this information is in your article or whatever, and for some reason it's not getting indexed. Um, one of the things to look out for is if you've got invalid HTML, then sometimes it can actually confuse the parser. Um, so a particular look out for things like uh, quotes being in the wrong place in attributes, because uh, then uh, the, the parser can actually strip the entire text out because it thinks it's an attribute when, in fact, it's actually part of the stuff that you want to keep. Invalid UTF-8 characters are basically completely stripped out. They're totally ignored. Um, and as I've said, text in attributes themselves is ignored. So if you've got uh, alt tags, uh, title tags, for example, in, uh, in links and alt tags in images, then they're going to get stripped out. They're not going to be indexed. Now, maybe in a future version of Search, Smart Search, we might actually look at how do we actually extract that information and index it as well. But at the moment, it doesn't index it. Purging. Uh, there is a, a big button in the, uh, in the back end of Smart Search called Purge, uh, and it's often not clear as to when you should actually click it. Um, most of the time, you don't need to click it. Uh, although, having said that, uh, there is actually a bug in the current version of Smart Search, so uh, Joomla 2.5.4. You probably will find that you will need to do a purge index cycle periodically if you've got content changes. But that is already going to be fixed in 255. The fix is already in the trunk. So two, once 255 is released, that bug will be fixed. Um, what happens is that it, it fails to remove old search terms. If you, uh, if you change the content, if you change a word around or something like that, then the old word doesn't get removed from the index. Uh, the purge basically just empties all the tables, empties the entire index tables, all the index tables. And then you click index again, and it re rebuilds everything. So the occasions when you might need to do a purge are if you've made changes to the taxonomies which are not reflected in the content items themselves. Taxonomy changes generally. If you're changing the actual structure of tax taxonomies, you'll generally need to do a purge index. Um, if you change various things in the, uh, in the options there, so term weights, changes to the stemmer, things like that, which are obviously fairly uh, you know, configurational ch changes, then uh, you may very well need to, to do a purge and re-index. Um, the important point to note, uh, and again, this is something we're going to try and work on for the next version, is that if you have static filters, uh, if you use static filters in the back end, uh, then they do get lost when you purge. 
So when you rebuild, you've actually got to manually go in and re-enter those uh, static filter definitions. So that's one thing to remember. If you've, if you've got static filters and they're complicated, make sure you make a note of what they were before you purge. But hopefully we'll try and figure out a way in which you can like, back up the, uh, the old, fir uh, the old uh, filter definitions uh, and then reload them again after the purge or something like that. Um, Uh, tuning smart search, there's, uh, we have, um, I suppose issues is perhaps too strong a word, but certainly at the moment uh, in, some, in some circumstances, in some, on some servers, on some configurations, uh, smart search indexing particularly is very, very heavy and very uh, difficult to actually get it to work properly. Um, on the, we have, for example, I think there was uh, Matthias doing uh, Kunena. Uh, and he had a, a forum with tens of thousands of posts in it, and it was resulting in such a, a massive map table that the entire indexing process was basically crashing his PC before it finished. Um, so we, we've got to work on how to, how to fix those sort of problems. Um, uh, and most of it is a question of uh, being able to make adjustments to um, uh, various parameters within the system. So, so things like the number of terms that are being indexed, the number of tokens that are being indexed within a, a search phrase uh, is, at the moment we've set it at three, so it indexes every one, two, or three token subsequence within a string. Uh, is basically hard-coded as three. Uh, we need to really be able to allow people to uh, put in whatever number they like. So if they've got a particularly big site, and three is just totally unrealistic because it's going to result in a billion search entries in the table or something then we need to be able to switch that down to one, let's say, on that particular site uh, in order to uh, make, that, make it possible to actually index the site. Because after all, most people don't have the, the, the server resources of Google, for example. Most people are running on realistic servers. But most normal, I would say the 99% of, of ordinary sites, if you like, not massive uh, sites, will experience no problems at all in indexing. Um, and in fact, we've even run uh, Smart Search on um, some very low-cost hosts, just as a test. I won't name names, but uh, some, some very cheap hosting providers uh, to, to make sure that, in actual fact, even on these very, very limited servers, we can actually index a realistic site. Um, there are occasions when you get an out-of-memory uh, problem, um, and we're still investigating some of these. The fix usually is to reduce the batch size way down, which actually makes the indexing process take longer, but it actually fits in the available memory rather than uh, running out of memory. But if you get an out of memory issue, then please report it because uh, we need to better understand when we're hitting limits so that we can make sure that we, we don't hit those limits in the future. Um, there is a terms per batch uh, and, uh, configuration parameter in the back end, which people are often tempted to, to tweak. Uh, and, but in actual fact, nine times out of ten, it's actually not going to do anything because it needs to match an equivalent uh, configuration in the Apache server. So if you just change it in, in Smart Search, it, it's actually not going to make any difference. Uh, but again, report these kind of issues to us because we need to know, we need to understand how to, how to uh, fix these things better. Where next? Where, where do we go after Smart Search? I mean, uh, we, I think Smart Search in 2.5 is pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. There are one or two bugs that, uh, that we're aware of and that we're working on. Some have already been fixed, and we'll be in 2.5.5. There are a few other issues that we're aware of, but they only affect a very, very small number of sites. Uh, and if you report them, I'm sure we can fix them. Um, where do we want to go next? Well, to some extent, that's up to you to people like you, because uh, we're, we formed the uh, search working group, um, and we want input on what kind of features uh, that will, will, will be, what you want actually in the next version of search. Um, so uh, we're holding a working group meeting uh, tomorrow, I think it is. Is that the 19th? <coughs> the 19th tomorrow? Yes, it is. Um, at 11.30, so everybody's welcome to come along. 
Um, I will actually, I've, I've got a kind of a laundry list of things that I want to see done in search um, for the next version or for the next several versions. Um, but my list might not match your list, so let's get these things together and see what, uh, what we can come up with and see what, what, are, what are the high priority items uh, that we need to work on first. Joomla 3.0 is uh, scheduled for release in September, but we need to get whatever code changes we want to make to Smart Search in by July, which is a pretty tall order because that's only like eight weeks away or something like that. So I'm not expecting huge changes in Smart Search between uh, now and then, basically. I don't think you'll see any major changes in Smart Search going into 3.0. Probably what it will be is we'll be doing tweaks to uh, things like uh, the configuration parameters to allow more flexibility in, in, the, in the configuration. But we'll probably be rolling those back out to 2.5, or some of them out will, will be rolled out to 2.5 as well, because they're of use to the long-term release, uh, as well as the next release. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have a meeting of the search working group again at, uh, at the world, world Conference in November. So <coughs> just to quickly go through um, part, of, part of my laundry list this is a very small subset of, uh, of the things that I'd like to see going into the next version of, uh, of search, or the next book one, maybe, um, certainly improvements uh, that I want to see. Uh, and the top of my list really is improvements to uh, language support. Uh, uh, Smart search at the moment is multi-language. It will work in lots of different languages. Uh, but I think we can make it work even better. So, for example, we've got uh, the common word support. It works, but at the moment you have to basically issue your own MySQL statements to get the, the, the common words loaded into the system. We need to figure out a way in which that can be done in a lot cleaner way. Uh, stammers is a, an area that, uh, of research work as much as anything else. We need to find people who, can, uh, who understand how to put stammers together in lots of different languages. Uh, the English one is pretty good, but if you go outside of English, they're either non-existent or they don't work terribly well. Um, alternatives to Soundex. Can we find alternatives to Soundex which work better in local languages? Um, and mixed language content items. Uh, we, at the moment, uh, if you have uh, an article that's written in English but has a French quotation in it, for example, then it is indexed as an English article. Um, and the French effectively is treated as though it was English. So is there some way in which we can actually uh, do it so that even if you're, on a, uh, if you're on a French site and there is an English article with a French quote in it, can we find that if you're French? Can you find it if you're English? How do we do that? How does the user interface work? How does the indexing work on that? We haven't figured it out yet. That needs, to, that needs some work. Other possibilities, I've mentioned already this problem of uh, static filters and how do we actually preserve those filters going through a purge index recycle, uh, cycle. Um, decoupling the indexing, as I mentioned before, the indexing is, a, is actually quite a heavy process. Uh, and in particular, when you save an article, so let's say you, you, you've edited your uh, article and you click the Save button, um, you realistically want to have the user get a response back from the system, be able to save that article fairly quickly. And of course, nine times out of 10, that's exactly what will happen. But if you've got an article which runs to you know, thousands upon thousands of lines of text, which I, I know one or two users have actually tried doing, it can take you know, 30 seconds maybe to get back, to, to go through the indexing process on that article and come back to you. Uh, and it, the danger is, of course, that you're gonna, it's going to white screen because it runs out of time. You know, PHP typically has I don't know, 30 second, 60 second time limit on the on execution time. I forget what it is now, what the default tends to be. Um, but certainly we have had occasional reports where people have white screened because uh, the indexing has not run fast enough uh, to beat that time limit. And the approach I'd like to see to, to fix that is that we decouple the indexing process from the user interface using a message queue. So effectively, click the Save button. It just drops the, the information into a queue, uh, but just carries on, gives control back to the user. And then the indexing process can then carry on in the background, and it can take as long as it wants. And that, uh, that does mean that we can actually make the indexing process even more sophisticated. Because the more sophisticated we get, the chances are it's going to be slower. So we, we have that opportunity. 
uh, range queries. It's not terribly easy to do range queries at the moment. If you might have noticed on that uh, one of the estate agent site there, I had a little slider control there which, where you could select the price range that you wanted for the properties. Uh, you can do it in Smart Search, yes. I've done it in Smart Search. It's, it's there, it works. It's not terribly easy to do it, though. It, it involves overlapping sets, basically, and, and working through the taxonomies to get overlapping sets. So maybe there's one, one way in which we can um, uh, improve the way in which we support range queries. Logging. Uh, this is actually one feature of the old search that we haven't been able to, or haven't, just haven't done. We haven't carried it forward into Smart Search. We don't keep any search statistics. So in, if you remember in the old search, you can actually go into the back end and get a, a summary of all the search terms that people have entered and how many times they've entered it. And it's, I think it's sorted into order of how frequent they were or something like that. Uh, that facility is just not available in Smart Search. And I know one or two people have said that uh, they'd like to actually see that. So despite the fact that it would probably, uh, well, despite the fact that it does increase your server load trying to log all this information, uh, then perhaps we should do it. Uh, variable length token aggregation, again, I've mentioned that before, is uh, just altering the number of uh, tokens that you index. So on big sites, you index fewer terms. Uh, Multi-level taxonomies. At the moment, taxonomies are strictly one level deep. Um, most of the time, that isn't actually a problem. But it would be nice to get uh, a multi-level taxonomy system in, in place, uh, probably based on um, uh, JTable nested. Uh, I would imagine that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and passes for uh, various other formats as well. I mentioned PDF before. Uh, the old Finder component actually had a parser for PDF and Word, I think. And there may have been one or two others as well. I forget now. Um, there's no particular reason, other than time, that we didn't port those across to, to Smart, Search, so, uh, Smart Search. So again, that's, that's something that really needs to be done going forward. No particular reason why it can't be done. It's just a matter of somebody getting down and, and doing the work. Uh, and this is uh, perhaps the most interesting one um, going forward is, uh, is a search API. Uh, at the moment, everything is kind of plug-in based, and there isn't really a, an API for search, or it, it's, sort of, it's sort of an API, but it's not really a clean API for doing search. Uh, and we, we need really to get, probably at the platform level, uh, a search API built um, and defined, uh, and then move Smart Search over to use this new API. It certainly won't happen for 3.0 because there just isn't time to do it. But it may be that we can actually start defining that API and building that API during the 3.x cycle so that by the time we get to Joomla 4.0, we could actually recode Smart Search to use that new API. And uh, documentation. Um, we're always in need of documentation. It's, it happens to be a, a particular pet area of mine and, and an area that I've always had responsibility uh, for from, from day one. I've tried to write a, as much as I can in, in uh, the smart search category. That's the place to go to. Um, but more is always needed. There's, uh, there's, there are some gaps that I know of that where we need to spend some time beefing up the documentation. There. So that's, uh, that's about it that I want to say. Um, does anybody have any questions? Sorry, come again? The, the ACL, yeah, there's, actually, there's an, that's another interesting um, issue that's on, on the list. I didn't put it up there, but uh, there, is an, uh, there is an issue with the auto-suggester. Um, generally, as far as uh, the search results is con as con are concerned, they do honor the ACL, at least as far as they know they do. Um, it probably needs more testing. <coughs> but they certainly, it's certainly a ACL aware. Uh, the code is there. I'm not sure it's been thoroughly tested, but as far as I know, it works. But the auto-suggestion totally ignores ACL. So if you do have, and this, this issue has been mentioned before, if you do have a site where you've got secure articles, you, you've got articles that you definitely don't want being made public, then it, it turns out that search terms within those articles, so individual words within those articles, are actually publicly available through, through the auto-suggester. So if you, are, you know, if you have a site where you are a bit paranoid about security and, you, and there are certain keywords that you don't want people 
to see in the auto-suggestion. Remember, you can't see the article because as soon as you click on that link, it says you don't have access. But you can at least see the term. You can see that the term got indexed. If you don't want that level of information being exposed, then basically switch the auto-suggestion off. Um, now, it would be nice to be able to say to people, well, actually, it w the auto-suggestion will honor the HCL as well. Um, but we need to work out whether that is realistically possible because the ACL is, is, involves more queries. And the whole point of also suggestion is it has to operate in real time. Every time you do a, a click a key in the, in the search field, it does an AJAX request, does a database call. If you add ACL into that mix, it might slow it down to the point where you're really not getting the search results fast enough. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the issues we run into is if I have a search on my name, it's in the author. How do we turn that off? Uh, There's the weight. Can we use a button and the weight to zero? No, the, the easiest way to do that, you, your author is a taxonomy. Uh, so you just unpublish the taxonomy from the, um, in the back end, in the content maps. That's, that's a bug. You should report that. Yes. <laughs> it shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, if it's unpublished, you just shouldn't, shouldn't see it at all, full stop. Yeah, but when you create the new one, it should honor the unpublished thing. So although it adds it into the terms index or whatever, then it should, uh, it should still be unpublished. It's probably adding it in, but publishing it by default when it should have looked up and said, oh, well, actually, this should be unpublished. I'm guessing that's why anyway, but that's uh, you know, certainly from what you're from what I understand of what you're saying, that sounds to me like a bug. You shouldn't actually be doing that. So. Despite the fact that you've unpublished it. Oh, okay. It might, of course, it might actually be the other bug that I mentioned about the if you delete art or if you change content articles, the old terms are not getting removed. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. It sounds. It certainly sounds like a bug. Anyway, if you report it, we'll we'll look into that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's it's a uh, probably yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Um, you could certainly you could certainly in your plugin assign higher multipliers in the plugin to the other con to all the other content items, and that should probably do it. But I would try it and just see what effect you have, be because it's not just the multiplier that's being taken into consideration there; it's other thing, other factors as well. Um, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of that. But try it. If it's a problem, let us know, and we'll see what we can do to to, to do that sort of thing. Because it's a perfectly reasonable thing to want to do. Uh, so we, we need to be able to support that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Incidentally, that's one of the most powerful things about smart search is that, is that you're, by default, your search results are coming back in order of relevance compared to the search query, regardless of what their content type is. So that, uh, you know, on a typical site, you'll actually have a mix of articles, web links, uh, all that. It's all sort of mixed together. And it depends on how relevant that particular search result is. And they're order, ranked in order of relevance. You can rank them in other orders as well, but the default is relevance. Yes. No, it doesn't. It doesn't use that at all because it, it uses that uh, search terms table uh, as a, an index. So it's not using the full text search at all.
I think it's using an exact match on the on the key rather than a full text thing. No. The, the, the problem with full text search is it's actually slow. Uh, so we try to avoid that if we can. Uh, and th this was actually one of the problems with the old search, of course, is it re relied on the, on the full text search. Sorry, come again? Uh, I'd have to actually look at the code to be actually certain. But I don't think it uses like. I think it, look, I think it just uses. Sorry? Yes, exactly, yeah. So we try to avoid that if we can. Just to comment on the number of tables you've got in the database. Yep. Some of the sites that we're running in Spark Search on, we're using 2.5 for a while. Spark Search is quite an interesting term for the sites. Is that the database size has increased dramatically? Yep. That, I think, is going to cause a lot of issues for certain users who are using hosts which don't have a big database. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the solution the solution for that is is um, that we reduce the, the length of those uh, terms. So instead of using uh, those triples, indexing triples, you drop it down to doubles or double it down to in, in, individual ones. If you've got limits on the size of the database, that's that's one solution to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, it's 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 not unusual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we are aware of it, and the, and the solution is to reduce, in, in those cases, to reduce the amount of, the, of stuff that you're actually putting in the index. Yeah. But at the moment, it, it's basically hard coded at three, so we can't easily change it. You've actually got to recode stuff to be able to, uh, to do that. So that's going to go into the. We'll probably put it into 256 or something like that, because it's coming up quite frequently that people are having this issue. Sorry? We haven't written it yet. So. <laughs> Of course. What would be kind of like a best practice documentation be type thing for large sites? Because that kind of thing can cause massive problems with, like, we've got sites with, say, 60,000 articles. <coughs> right. Um, yes, you can narrow down how many terms, but then you're becoming less efficient. In yeah. There's, there's no reason why we can't start a, a page specifically for uh, aimed at, at large. You know what to do if you've got a big site. Um, you know how do you actually tune the thing? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, there are warnings in the documentation that if you got that your database can get big. I'm pretty sure they're in there anyway. But. Yes, that, that's a good idea. I think we should, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, you'll still get a big database because if you think about it, if you think about it, if you've got a, an article with a thousand words in it, then even if, even if you're just individual, indexing individual words, that's a thousand entries in, the, in, the, uh, in that mapping table. Yeah, exactly. Now, a, a, a set at three, every search word, every word in that article is, getting, is making three entries. So if you've got a thousand words in your article, which is quite a short article, really, that's three thousand entries in that table straight away. Which is why I say typically you, you, you're seeing on reasonable size sites, you're, you're looking at databases with millions of rows. Um, which is why, of course, that mapping table is split into sh into sixteen pieces straight away. Anyway, is to is to improve the performance of that. But of course, improving the performance doesn't make it any smaller. And what we need to do is to work on a parameter that will enable us to actually reduce the size of that table in, uh, for those particular sites. No, it's, it's used to alter the weights that are assigned to the um, uh, search terms. I'm not sure ignoring them is actually a, the right strategy anyway. But anyway, it's, it's something we can discuss. I've just been given the, the flag to say, stop. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. Anyway, I hope to see you tomorrow.